Good afternoon, my dear students, and today we're going to start the new chapter of Internal Medicine Lectures course in this chapter has a name Gastroenterology. First topic will be gastroesophageal reflux disease. This epagus is a muscular tube approximately 20 centimeters long with the main function of transportation the food from the mouth to the stomach. This epagus is divided into three main parts. In the upper portion of this epagus, both the outer longitudinal layer and inner circular muscular layers are straight. In the lower two thirds of this epagus, uh, including the thoracic and abdominal parts, both layers are composed of the smooth muscles. The distal thoracic esophagus is located in the left side of the midline. As the thoracic esophagus enters the abdomen through the esophageal hiatus of the diaphragm, it becomes an abdominal esophagus. The hiatus is formed by the right cross of the diaphragm, which forms a seam around the esophagus, with the right and the left pillars, so that the esophagus narrows when the diaphragm contracts. The actual contribution the diaphragm provides is the maintaining of the adequate length of intra-abdominal esophagus is not clearly understood. However, Careful identification of approximation of the pillars during surgical treatment is crucial for preventing the recurrence of the reflux disease. The esophagus, as I already said, is divided into three main parts, cervical, thoracic, and abdominal. The body of esophagus is made up of inner circular and outer longitudinal muscular layers. The proximal third of the esophagus is a striated muscle which transition to the smooth, which transition to the smooth muscle in the distal to third. The proximal esophagus contains the upper esophageal sphincter, which comprises the circumpharyngeus and thyropharyngeus muscles. The lower esophageal sphincter, or more correctly, what should be named the distal esophageal high pressure zone, is the distal most segmented uh, of the esophagus part. Uh, and usually in adults, uh, it's from 3 to 5 centimeters long and can be anywhere from 2 to 5 centimeters in length. Maintenance of the end the adequate intra-abdominal pressure zone is crucial for preventing GRT. Uh, let's talk about uh, structure of the esophagus on the histology level. The esophagus is lined by stratified squamous epithelium, which extends distally to the squamocolumnar junction where the esophagus joins the stomach. Recognize endoscopically by zigzag lane, as you can see on the, these peaks. Just above the most proximal gastric folds. The esophagus is separated from the pharynx by the upper esophageal sphincter, which is normally closed due to tonic activity of the nerve supply and the cricopharyngeus. Physiology of esophagus. Esophagus has several mucosal defense me mechanisms which helps uh, him to prevent to prevent uh, destruction by that uh, stomach acidity, as acidic contain, and it prevents GERD in normal situation, in normal healthy human being. First, uh, mucose defense mechanism is the surface. Mucus and unstrated water layers trap the carbonate of the acid, stomach acid. This mechanism is weak buffering mechanism compared to that in the stomach and duodenum. Epithelium, the epical cell membranes and the junction complex between cells act to limit diffusion of hydrogen into the cells. In esophagitis, it's vagitis, sorry. Uh, the junctional complex are damaged, leading to increases of hydrogenic ions diffusion and cellular damage. Third mechanism is post epithelium. Bicarbonate normally buffers acid in the cells and intracellular space. Hydrogen ions impair the growth and the replication of damaged cells. Next mechanism is sensory mechanism. Acid stimulates primary sensory neurons of esophagus by activating specific vanilloid receptor 1. This can initiate inflammation and the release of pro-inflammatory substances from the tissues and produce pain. 
pain can also be due to contraction of longitudinal esophageal muscles. During swelling in healthy human being, the purpose of the food is voluntarily moved from the mouth to the pharynx. This process is mediated by a complex reflex involving a swallowing uh, center in the dorsal motor nucleus of the vagus in the brainstem. Once activated, the swallowing center neurons send pre-programmed discharge of inhibition followed by excitation to the motor nuclei of the cranial nerves. This results in initiation relaxation followed by distinct progressive activation of neurons to the esophageal smooth muscles and lower esophageal sphincter. Pharyngeal and esophageal peristalsis mediated by the swallowing reflex causes primary peristalsis. Secondary peristalsis arises as a result of stimulation by food bolus in the lumen, mediated by a local intraesophageal reflex. Tertiary contractions indicate pathological non-propulsive contractions, resulting from aberrant activation of the local reflexes within the meanteric plexus. The smooth muscles of the thoracic esophagus and lower esophageal sphincter is supplied by vagal, vagal autonomic motor nerves consisting of extratrinic preganglionic fibers and intramuscular postganglionic neurons in the meantric plexus. There are polarly accessory and inhibitory pathways. GRD etiology presented on these pictures and consists from uh, many factors from functional as low stomach acid, Two bad habits of uh, modern people, including larger, me uh, larger meals, including cigarette smoking, uh, uh, over exercising, uh, presence of magnesium defi deficiency, or pregnancy, which leads to increasing of depression in the abdominal cavity. Tight fitted colostin leads to the same increasing of depression into abdominal cavity and helps of appearance of the reflux disorder. As you can see on this picture, we have two major factors uh, that can influence GRD etiology and defensive mechanism of uh, esophagus cannot uh, protect actually the organ from the damage. The lower esophageal sphincter is defined by manometry as a zone of elevated intraluminar pressure at the esophagogastric junction present here. For proper its function, this junction must be located in the abdomen so that the diaphragm and crura can assist the action of the lower esophageal sphincter, thus function of the extreme sphincter. In addition, this sphincter must have a normal length and pressure and a normal number of episodes of transition to relaxation. It means the relaxation uh, in presence, in absence of the swelling. Three dominant mechanisms of esophagogastric junction in components are recognized. First one, transition lower esophageal sphincter relaxation. It's a vagal vagal reflex in which uh, sphincter relaxation is less seated by a gastric distension when food comes into the gastric lumen. Uh, lower esophageal sphincter hypertension or the third one, anatomical distortion of the esophageal gastric junction inclusive of hiatus hernia. Of note, this third factor, gastroesophagic junction anatomic disruption, is both significant uh, up to itself and also because it interacts with the two first mechanisms, making, making them worse than without this factor. Pathogenesis of a GRD disorder. Uh, factors of protection uh, cannot actually protect uh, the esophageal surface from the damage as uh, it's uh, impaired tissue resistance, impaired esophageal clearance, uh, changes in the pressure and delayed gastric emptying and the presence of hiatal hernia as 
a supportive factor to decrease functionality of the lower esophageal sphincter. So delayed gastric emptying uh, may cause GRT is in as an increase in the gastric contents resulting in increased intragastric pressure and ultimately increased pressure against the lower esophageal sphincter. This pressure eventually defeats the sphincter and leads to reflux. However, objective studies have produced conflicting data regarding the role of delayed gastric emptying of the pathogenesis of GRD. Hadal hernia as a factor of appearance of GRD. Uh, the lower esophageal sphincter in this case can migrate approximately into the chest and lose its abdominal high pressure zone, which is a very important as protection of, from uh, uh, reflux of acidic gastric content to esophagus. The diaphragm hiatus may be denoted by a large hernia, which impairs the ability of the crura to function as an external sphincter. Finally, gastric content may be trapped into the hiatal hernial sac and reflux proximately into the esophagus during relaxation of the lower esophageal sphincter. Reduction of the hernias and crural corrosion are critical to restoring an adequate intra-abdominal length of the esophagus and recreating the uh, high pressure zone, abdominal high pressure zone. Usual symptoms of GRD are not very specified and can be easily uh, misdiagnosed with similar uh, gastroesophageal disorder as, for example, peptic ulcer and also esophagitis uh, present just of uh, hiatal hernias or dysphagia, for example. But, uh, usually, GRD is associated with a set of typical esophageal symptoms, including heartburn, regurgitation, and dysphagia. In addition to those these sympt typical symptoms, abnormal reflux can cause typical or extraesophageal symptoms, such as coughing, chest pain, uh, or whistling. Can be present in history of nausea, vomiting, or regurgitation, which alert the physician to evaluate for delayed gastric empty more closely. Also, patients can have such complaints as hoarseness of the voice due to damage of acid content, uh, stomach acid content by the vocal cords, difficulty of the swelling, presence of the lump in the throat or chest type. Uh, let's see, so GRD uh, patient can be described as retrosternal burning sensation uh, relieved by simple antacids. Regurgitation is effortless return of the gastric or is a pedial content into the pharynx. Regurgitation can induce respiratory complications if gastric content spilled into the tracheal bronchial tree from aspirational pneumonias to even pleural pneumonias. They also can lead to appearance of bronchiectatic disorders in some cases. Dysphagia occurs in approximately one of the sort patients, and such patients experience a sensation that food is stuck, particularly in the retrosternal area. Can be severe, can be can be in the form of the mild sy uh, symptoms, but at least presence. A typical estrosophageal symptom, coughing or whistling, are respiratory symptoms resulting from the aspiration of the gastric content in the tropical bronchial tree or from the vagal reflex are producing bronchial constriction. Hoarseness, as I already said, is irritation of the vocal cords by gastric refluxicate. Uh, usually present in the morning as postural position of the body helps uh, the gastric refluxicate uh, um, move into the vocal cords. A reflux is the most common cause of non cardiac chest pain, encountering for approximately 50% of the cases. Patient can represent the emergency departments with the pain resembling and myocardial infarction. The similar story can be otherwise. So patient with uh, 
posterior myocardial infarction can have symptoms similar to reflux disease or peptic ulcer disorder. So such patients can should be uh, administered uh, or to ACG or should be administered 24-hour pH testing to exclude post cardiovascular and as, uh, gastroesophageal pathology. Additional typical symptoms from abnormal reflux include damage of the lungs, as I already said. Pneumonia, asthma, idiopathic fibrosis, laryngitis, even otitis media, or presence of caries or animal decay. Animal decay. What kind of indication we do have for the upper endoscopy or should any patient with GRD be referred to upper endoscopy? As you know, that's an invasive procedure, not so easy um, made for uh, adult patients, for older patients, for people with neurosis or any uh, or cardiovascular dis disorders, so including the high blood pressure, angina, post-infarction state, severe heart failure, and etc. So upper endoscopy is not required in the presence of typical GRD symptoms on the heartburn and regurgitation. When should be recommended? When diagnosis of GRD is unclear or you can uh, observe alarm features of or abnormal imagining if not performed with the, within the last three months. Should also be performed to screen the buried esophagus in patients with risk factors as complication of GRD disorder. Patient with GRD should receive empiric acid suppressive therapy, even if additional evaluation with an upper endoscopy is indicated. Endoscopy is a sensitive test for diagnosing of the esophagitis, but can miss non erosive reflux disease, uh, since some patients have symptomatic reflux without esophagitis. The most sensitive test for diagnosing of GRD is 24-hour ambulatory pH monitoring. Endoscopy is indicated in patients with reflux symptoms, refractory to anti-secretory therapy, with those with alarm symptoms we name later, <coughs> I'm sorry, and those with recurrent dyspepsia. Endoscopy should be considered in patients with long-standing GERD if and they have a sick cold increased risk of heartburn viruses effects compared to patients with not known story of GERD. Gastroduodenoscopy can demonstrate uh, anatomy, uh, uh, structure of the esophagus, presence or absence GERD as destruction of esophageal wall, also, it can identify possible presence and severity of complication of reflux disease, such as esophagitis, barred esophagus, or strictures. Using the patient history and pathological analysis of the biopsy specimens obtained during endoscopy, the diagnosis of the GRD can be made. Also, GRD, uh, also, sorry, esophageal gastroduodenoscopy excludes the presence of other disorders which can have similar to GRD clinical picture. Esophageal manometry defines the function of lower esophageal sphincter and the esophageal body function, named peristalsis. Esophageal manometry is essential for correctly positioning the probe of or the 24-hour pH monitoring. The indication for such uh, instrumental methodic or observation of the patient include persistence of the symptoms while taking adequate anti-secretory therapy, such as PPI, or recurrence of symptoms after discontinuation of the acid-reducing medication, investigation of the typical symptoms such as chest pain or asthma in patients without esophagitis, and confirmation of the diagnosis in preparation of anti reflux surgery. Menometry means uh, uh, evaluation of the pressure or functional, uh, how can esophagus 
uh, maintain the normal pressure and inside and outside and the evaluation of uh, functional ability of its work. Ambulatory 24-hour pH monitoring, as it was already said, the criteria st standard in establishing of diagnosis of GRD, sincerity 96, specificity, specificity 95. Uh, it uh, quantifies the gastroesophageal reflux and allows a correlation between symptoms of the reflux and episodes of the reflux. Patients with endoscopically confirmed esophagitis do not need pH monitoring to establish diagnosis of the GRD. So if you have patient with um, typical signs and symptoms of GRD and no alarm uh, symptoms and no actually um, um, absence of uh, positive influence of the therapy prescribed, uh, no need to prescribe for the patient GRD. Uh, the patient with GRD as a phago gastroscopy. If you have patient already made an esophagoscopy, no need to prescribe ambulatory 24-hour pH monitoring as uh, esophagogastroscopy allows you to observe and to evaluate the uh, presence of the diagnosis and severity of the disorder present. The principal indications for 24-hour pH monitoring are to document excessive acid or non-acid reflux, to correlate symptoms with the reflux episodes, to identify candidates for anti-reflux surgery, to evaluate the effectiveness of the medical and surgical treatments. Can be done when the patient is on or off proton pump or inhibitor therapy. With the test is done of the therapy, the diagnosis of GRD can be confirmed or excluded. If monitoring is done of therapy and no acidic pH is found in the stomach, the diagnosis of achlorhydria is confirmed. Monitoring on therapy can determine the adequacy of the gastric acid suppression and the presence of esophageal acid exposure in the patient who have been referred for testing because PPI therapy failed. Test may use a transnasal continuous reflux monitoring catheter as on this uh, picture present or the viral pH monitoring device that is endoscopically attached to the distal sphagus. Another one uh, imagined study called nuclear imaging uh, can help to establish or to understand the gastric emptying function. Uh, Gastroesophageal reflux scintigraphy can be performed with acidified orange juice liquid with uh, titanium in, in case of GRD sulfur colloid. Compared with fluoroscopy, this allows for a long time of evaluation and decreased radiation dose. However, this type of imaging has little role in the adult patient because of limited sensitivity and the availability of the other methods of evaluation. So if it's some reason for patient can be prescribed uh, imagining as uh, gastroesophageal gastroscopy or patient uh, have problem with the swallowing of the indicator for 24 hour um, pH monitoring. If this imagining uh, test couldn't be uh, performed, uh, the last option is uh, gastroesophageal reflux scintigraphy, uh, which helps to understand problem of the functionality of the esophagus. Uh, and the muscular tones of its walls. Plain radiographic findings are not useful in evaluating patients of GRD, but they are helpful in evaluating pulmonary status and basic anatomy. Just images may dem demonstrate a large hiatal hernia, but small hernias can be missed easily. Upper GI contrast induced studies are the initial radiological procedure of the choice in the workup of the patients in whom GRD is suggested. The primary use of contrast in high studies is suspected reflux is to, in suspected reflux is to evaluate anatomy and not to detect reflux 
but rather to detect complications of the reflux. So they are more useful in complication of GARD in findings as, for example, different type of strictures, presence of absence of varieties of fagus complications, if you want to make differential diagnosis between GRD and possible cancer of the esophagus for patient to whom gastroesophageal gastroscopy could not be prescribed for some reasons. Approach considerations. The treatment, treatment of GRD disorder involves a stepwise approach. The goals are to control symptoms, to heal esophagitis, uh, and to stop this disorder on the top of esophagitis and to not uh, allow it to lead to strictures or barrets esophagus, to prevent recurrent esophagitis or other complications. The treatment is based on lifestyle modifications and, of course, control of the gastric acid secretion through medical therapy with antacids or PPI or surgical treatment with corrective anterior surgery. If uh, H. pylori uh, infection will be found during observation of the patient, uh, treatment includes uh, eradication of H. pylori infection as a cause of possible increased acidity and GERD appearance. Lifestyle modification include the following. Losing weight if patient is overrated. Avoiding alcohol, chocolate, citrus juice, and other type of meals which can lead to increasing of acidity of gastric content. Avoid large meals uh, or waiting three hours after meal before lying down and awaiting the head of the bed by uh, eight inches. Uh, they are the first line of the management in pregnant women with GRD. And advise patient uh, elevate the head of the bed during night sleep or during the rest. Avoid bending on stooping position. Eat small, frequent meals to refrain from digesting food within the three hours of the bedtime. All this lifestyle modification has the goal to decrease intra-abdominal pressure, to not increase intra-abdominal pressure, and also to not help uh, reflux um, from the stomach to the esophagus and to prevent further complications. As a medi medication in treatment of uh, GERD, PPI are the most powerful uh, drug group uh, which is available for treatment of the patients. This agent should be used only when this condition has been objectively documented. So if you're 100% sure in your diagnosis and lifestyle modification didn't work or patient don't wanna uh, sweet your actually uh, advices, don't want to follow your advices and take them into account. So proton pump inhibitors, or I'm sorry, uh, will be the first choice, like the golden standard. What they are do, they irreversibly inactivate the active form of the proton pump through the channel H. Uh, potassium ATP channel suppressing both stimulated and basic acid secretion produced by acetylcholine and histamine release. They accumulate the luminal surface of the, of the pump and for drugs that require acidic conversion to the active species. Long-term use of these agents, you should note it, that was associated with several actually side effects as bone fractures since postmenopausal women, chronic renal disease, acute renal disease, community acquired pneumonia, and clostridium difficile intestinal infection. And also long-term decreasing of acidity of the stomach uh, can lead to high risk of uh, stomach cancer appearance of patients should be observed from time to time. 
Best practice recommendation for proven GRD consists of the long-term therapy with the lowest dose of PPI that provides symptom control and or healing of the esophagitis. PPI is recommended, as I already said, as the first-line drugs and the treatment of GRD. If PPI therapy is not working, it can be switched to H2 receptor antagonist or H2 receptor antagonist can be added to PPI therapy already prescribed in case of severe cases of disorder. Mechanism of action of such drug as completely inhibits H2 receptors of the parietal cells, leads to inhibition of gastric acid secretion, decreasing of the amount of pepsin secretion, healing of gastric and duodenal ulcers, and they are more safe than actually PPI, but not so effective so as PPI, so can be used uh, only as a second therapy or as additional therapy. Uh, they are selective competitive antagonists of hesamine 2 receptors, suppressing, as I said, post bosal and stimulated acid excretion produced by hastening release. The name of the drugs is cimetidine, famotidine, which is the most known, nizatidine and ranitidine. And you should remember that ranitidine can influence all the male sexuality. So famotidine will be the better choice. This third line of the drugs used in the treatment of the GRD and it's mostly symptomatic treatment is antacids. They are basic aluminum, calcium or magnesium compounds primarily used to manage and intermittent esophageal symptoms, particularly heartburn. Uh, their main advantage is a rapid relief of the symptoms. Antacids do not provide prolonged symptom relief, hilarious esophagitis, or prevent GRD complication. They can only have protective function against acidic content of the stomach, help buffer its properties of H. color and prevent activation of the proton pump, which results in decreasing of acidic production. Also, magnesium present uh, has laxative effects and combination of aluminium and magnesium in such drugs are used uh, to lower stomach acid without producing uh, desirable constipation or diarrhea that can be present in patients, for example, on H2 blockers. Prokinetic agents is a first line of uh, GARD drug therapy, uh, considering that GRD is a disorder of, of intestinal, in our case, the fungal motility, and uh, that delayed gastric emptying has been identified in some patients with GRD. It follows that prokinetic agent may, be, may have some benefit. The gen newest generation selective antagonist as procolaropride, which does not have any cardiovascular toxicity of cilapride, may prove effective, so effective uh, may prove that can be effective against GRD. Prokinetic agents are somewhat effective, but only in patients with mild symptoms. It's some kind of helpful but symptomatic relief in patients with the mild symptoms. Uh, should not be prescribed uh, as uh, first-line therapy or monotherapy. Uh, Long-term use of prokinetic agents may have serious and potentially fatal complications and should be discouraged. Surgical care. If you treat your patient and despite your treatment, uh, patient still have symptoms uh, or despite your treatment uh, with the time and progression of GRD severity, there is no effects of medication. The last step in treatment of GRD is the surgical care. It can be fund application, laparotomic or fund application laparoscopic. Anyway, uh, fund application laparotomic. Uh, for whom should be prescribed patients with the symptoms that are not completely controlled by PPI term. In the presence of buried is a as indication for the surgery. 
in the presence of extraesophageal manifestation of GERD, which includes respiratory uh, symptoms, ear, nose, or throat manifestation, or dental manifestation. For young patient with severe GERD, for poor patient compliance to regard to medication and lifestyle modification, Postmenopausal women with osteoporosis when PPI therapy is not contraindicated, but rather not very desirable, as have side effects. Patient with cardiac conduction defects and cost of the medical therapy for patient is very high compared with surgical care. Laparoscopic fund application been formed under general, the drug anesthesia, it's a small uh, incisions comparing with laparotomic, easy for patient, uh, uh, better post-surgical period, shorter post-surgical period, so all the essential elements of the operation are follows. Complete mobilization of the fundus of the stomach with division, division sorry, of the short gastric vessels, reduction of head or hair if needed, narrowing of the sphagal hiatus, and creation of fund application over the large endotracheal dilator uh, with the creation of the secondary sphincter or the lower esophageal sphincter due to lower esophageal sphincter of the patient uh, cannot work properly as it should be. How to manage patient or with the re uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease in easy words. If patient has no large symptoms such as dysphagia, osinophagia, bleeding, more important, anemia, weight loss, early satiety or vomiting, which can be a sign of stricture or weight loss, and anemia can be a sign of the cancer or Barrett's esophagus, bleeding, the same story, uh, a sign of the cancer or Barrett's esophagus or varicose uh, vein disease of the lower esophagus, if patient has no such symptoms, you can start your PPI therapy with uh, as a first line treatment for eight weeks. If you have no response and patient still have no uh, sign alarm signs, you can add H2 blocker or antacid if it's possible. And to change the dose of PPI if patient has actually absolutely clear positive effect. If patient has a lot of symptoms, patient obviously should be referred to as a fagal gastroduodenoscopy to find the cause of its symptoms. If you find the patient has a cancer of the esophagus or Barrett's esophagus as a cause of bleeding anemia or weight loss in presence of GRD symptoms, patient should uh, be treated as a patient with Barrett's esophagus, not GRD. If there is no abnormal findings ex except esophagitis as a uh, um, uh, esophagitis as a proof of GRD present, so patient should be referred to pH monitoring uh, if it's possible to, especially patient with PPI therapy already prescribed to prove that your treatment is successful, maybe to, to actually check your therapy, to change it if it needed. If there is no as extra esophageal symptoms, so uh, it's okay, just pH monitor. If patient has a uh, sign of GRD and some extraesophageal symptoms, should be referred to, to consultation of proper physicians. So, ear, nose, or throat, uh, pulmonary, uh, actually, physician, uh, pulmonologist, or maybe allergologist, depending on what kind of extra esophageal symptoms our patient has. Uh, how to manage the patient means drug dosages and etc. So if your uh, patient has symptoms suggesting GRD and endoscopy confirms the patient has esophagitis, now it should think about severity of the disorders. So severe, non-severe, or mild. If a patient has no severe disease, so full doses of PPI uh, after one or two months, depending on the patient response to your therapy, can be or decreased or changed to 
H2 blocker for a month and presence of uh, positive effect and positive response of the disorder. Patient uh, H2 therapy can be changed to lifestyle modifications only with the diet and other as we already discussed. If patient has severe grade of esophagitis or starting of the arteriophagus, uh, you should prescribe full dosage of PPI for eight weeks and observe patient still uh, symptoms persist or not. If symptoms still persist and not resolved, uh, the do full high do dosage of PPI should be continued on eight weeks and then patients should be observed for presence or absence of complication and referred to the surgeon to uh, actually uh, mm, referring patient of possible surgical treatment of GPRD if uh, medical treatment is not working. If initial full dosage PPI for eight weeks uh, leads to a resolution of the symptom, you need to decrease the dosage of PPI and then to switch to lifestyle modification if you have positive effect of your treatment for the patient. Differential diagnosis in case of GRD includes coronary artery disease, achalasia, eosinophilic esophagitis, non ulcer dyspepsia, esophageal diverticula, gastroparesis, peptic ulcer disease, and esophageal or gastric neoplasm. We, this all disorder has similar symptoms to GRD as dysphagia, dysphagia, acidic, sometimes reflux, uh, heartburn, or pain. Uh, behind the sternum. Complication. Erosive esophagitis is characterized by erosion or ulcers of the esophageal mucosa. Patient may be asymptomatic or can present with worsening of the symptoms of GRD. The degree of esophagitis is endoscopically graded using Los Angeles esophagitis specification system and it can be defined as SBCD grading of esophagitis depending on the length, location, and circumferential severity of mucosal bricks of esophagus. Esophagus strictures, it's chronic acid irritation of the distal esophagus resulted in scarring of the distal of the esophagus leading to the formation of a peptic stricture. Patient can present with the symptoms of esophageal dysphagia or foot infection. Uh, newest guidelines recommended is effectual dilation and continued PPI therapy to prevent the need for repeated dilation. Uh, Isophageal dilation can be made by manometric dilation uh, under anesthesia by surgeon. So patients should be referred to the surgeon. Birds is a the most uh, scary complication, the most important complication of this effect occurs as a result of chronic pathological acid exposure to the distal esophageal mucosa. It leads to a histopathological change of the distal esophageal mucosa, which is normally lined by stratified squamous epithelium to metaplastic columnar epithelium. Barrett's esophagus is more commonly seen in Caucasian males, uh, about 50 years old, obese patients or smokers or with predisposers to development of esophageal adenocarcinoma. Current guidelines recommend the performance of periodic surveillance endoscopy in patients with a diagnosis of Barrett's esophagus if patient had no contraindication to endoscopical procedures. Uh -huh. Esophagitis, the most common complication, as we already discussed, best defined the subset of GRD patients are beta minority oral health. Esophagitis. Esophagitis occurs when a relaxed gastric acid uh, and pepsin cause necrosis of the esophageal mucosa, causing erosions and ulcers. Note that some degree of gastroesophageal reflux is normal, physiological, and traumatic. May be diagnosed using endoscopy. And uh, many of 50% of symptomatic patients with GRD demonstrate no evidence of esophagitis on endoscope. Uh, but still, documentation of this complication is important as diagnosis of GRD. 
Jack Gregory's of esophagitis are described by Savory Miller classification as follows. Grade 1 erythema, grade 2 linear monoconfluent erosions, grade 3 silkoral confluent erosions, and the last grade structure or vertex effect is as the most deepest damage of the esophageal wall. Uh, grading of esophagitis present on this slide as it's A, B, C, D system. So grade one uh, can be given for a patient if uh, one or more mucosa breaks. You can see this pointed as an arrow no longer than five centimeters long and do not exceed between the tops of two to mucosal folds. Grade B. One or more mucosal breaks longer than five millimeters that do not exceed between the tops of two, two mucosal folds. Grade C. One or more mucosal breaks that are continuous between the tops of two or more mucosal folds but not involve the more than less sorry than uh, 75 of circumference and grade D the most uh, severe one it's one or more mucosal breaks you can they point it in arrows not all of them but anyway you can see it that involve at least 75 percent of the esophageal circumference structure uh, advanced form of esophagitis and caused by circumferneal fibrosis due to chronic injury. Structures can result in dysphagia and the shortness of esophagus. GRD typically occur in the mid to distal esophagus and can be visualized on upper GI tract studies and endoscopy. You can see here it's, it's x ray with a barium or endoscopy. Presence of a structure with a history of a reflex can also have to develop GRT. Patient present with dysphagia to solid meals and vomiting of non-digested foods. As a rule, the presence of any esophageal structure is an indication that the patient needs surgical consultation and treatment usually after consultation. When patients present with dysphagia, barium esophagography is indicated to evaluate for possible strictures formation. You can see it here. In these cases, especially when associated with a foot infection, is anophilic esophagitis must be ruled out prior to attempting any mechanical dilation of the narrowed esophageal region. As is anophilic esophagitis, it's metaplastic disorder. Barrett esophagus. The most serious complication of the lower standing or, or severe GRD is the development of the parasitic effects. Present in 8 to 15 of patients with GRD and sought to be caused by chronic reflux of gastric juice into the esophagus. It's defined by metaplastic conversation of the normal distal squamous esophageal epithelium to columnar epithelium. Histologic examination of esophageal biopsy specimen is required to make the diagnosis. Varying degrees of dysplasia may be found on histological examination. Barrett's esophagus is an intestinal type of dysplasia, has malignant potential, and is a risk factor for the development of the esophageal adenocarcinoma, increasing of the risk of adenocarcinoma in 40 times generally. Okay, to make it clearly seen for you, I hope you can see. The diagnosis is made by endoscopy showing proximal displacement of the squamoconumnar mucosal junction and biopsy is demonstrating columnar line and both the proximal gastric folds. Intestinal metaplasia is no longer a requirement of the British Society of Gastroenterology the physician, but it's central to the American College of Gastroenterology guidelines. So you should refer to your country gastroenterology guidelines uh, to include intestinal metaplasia in uh, your diagnosis of parts of 
that is a tagus may be seen in a continual circumferential sheet or finger-like projection extended upwards from this guama columnar junction or as islands of columnar mucoanthers present in areas of residual squamous mucosa. Signs and symptoms unspecified for this disorder and they are include uh, the in, uh, frequent harbor and regurgitation of the stomach contents, difficulty swallowing food, and less commonly chest pain. On the BRA criteria, you can see uh, how to make diagnosis of Buffett's and Tagus. Uh, low grade dysphagia is found on the endoscopic surveillance and repeat endoscopy with a quadratic biopsy. Every one centimeter is usually performed within the six months, while patient is on high dosage program of PPI therapy. A long term surveillance in this group is controversial. In high grade dysplasia, if high grade dysplasia is found, this is usually in the context of the endoscopical visible lesions, which is nodular. If nodular is remoted by endoscopic and mucosal resection for more accurate histological stage. If high grade dysplasia is detected in the absence of any endoscopically visible lesions, high dose proton pulp inhibitor is started and repeat biopsy is taken within three months. Endoscopic ultrasound is frequently used to more accurately stage uh, this patient group to exclude cancer and associated significant lymphadenopathy. Radiofrequency ablation has superseded for the, uh, dynamic therapy as a technique of choice for endoscopic treatment of dysplasia within the buried segments following removal of any nodular lesions, returning the endotangles to squamous blood. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, please put them under YouTube video, which will be present to you uh, this Saturday, actually, and I will respond as soon as I will find them. Thank you very much one time and have a nice day.